Hi and welcome into this tutorial on how to deploy Ceph uh, using Ansible. This, uh, this tutorial is the second one and this time we will be deploying Ceph on Bruvenal machines. So I have five Bruvenal mach machines at the moment. Uh, they are all running uh, Rail 7, 7.1. And we will be using the Red Hat Storage 1.3, which is the Hammer version of Ceph, to uh, to deploy it. We will deploy monitors, OSDs, and a RADOS gateway as well. So first, let's let's clone the repo. Um, this tutorial assumes, of course, that uh, you have uh, Ansible installed uh, on your machine. Currently, um, I'm using 1.9.1 1 uh, as an Ansible version. You should be fine as of 1.7. Uh, otherwise, you, if you don't have at least 1.7, you'll have some issues with because some modules uh, and functions are not implemented earlier than 1.7. In case uh, Ceph is not, uh, in Ansible is not installed, you can always execute the Ansible install Ansible script that will uh, simply install Ansible on whatever distribution you're running on. So uh, let's jump let's jump into the configuration first. So we have a lot of flags, but uh, let, me, let me go through uh, all of this really quickly. So we support several installation types, uh, so we can install from the community version. Then we also support the Ceph Enterprise version, so the old Ink Tank Ceph Enterprise. We support the new version of uh, the new Enterprise version of Ceph um, called Red Hat Storage, and it's 1.3. We support the development version as well, so. You can also specify a specific branch if you want, and this will build a Ceph cluster phase on that branch. So as mentioned, um, we're gonna be using the Red Hat storage version this time. We support two installation types. The first one is from using the CDN. Of course, this assumes that your, your machines have access to cdn.redhat.com. If they don't, you, you can provide an ESO uh, that you downloaded to um, from from access to and then install it with the rest. So like uh, let's activate the CD inversion. Then we're good for for the installation type. It's not it's not mandatory, but we can provide a specific UID for for your cluster. So Let's generate one really quickly. Okay. And then what we need to do next is to specify a monitor interface for your monitors to, to listen on. So for me, this is this bound, bound one on this on this villain so it will, we support like a, a real life scenario for um, for deployments as well we support bounds and things like this now we need to, to provide a monitor secret this is the first secret of the monitors so if you don't have Ceph common installed um, there is a file in this repo called monitor keys and just acts as a as an example so you can easily shove um, a random key. I think we have like something, something like ten thousand lines of keys. So we can randomly, we can randomly pick one. Then we need to specify a journal size. I'll go with ten gig this time. These uh, these options that I'm well I'm commenting now are mandatory options. If you don't, 
use them, well, uh, you won't be able to deploy the cluster. Basically, we have a task that is checking if these variables are uh, enabled and defined. If they're not, the playbook will fail. So we fail early in the process. In terms of networking, we need to specify on which network on which network we want our OSDs to, to listen on. So for me, this is this network. We also support cluster network. Um, by default, this is the same than public network. In this in this scenario, I only have one interface, but well, one interface that I want to expose. But if you if you have multiple interfaces, then you can have a public interface and a, a cluster interface as well. Then this is all options. We we stick with the defaults. Uh, let me change that, change that as well. Rados Gate will see it with port to 8080. I think I have an Apache running already, so don't want to have any conflict here. And yeah, we are we're good for the general configuration. Now we need to configure the OSDs. So for the OSDs, we support several scenarios. That the first one being a journal, uh, journal collocation, where you store your journal on the same disk as your OSD data. The second one is using a dedicated journal or multiple dedicated journals. And the third one is using a directory. So if you don't want to, if you don't want Seth and Sybil to bootstrap your your disk, your partitions layout, uh, for system types, and things like this, you can simply expose directories, and we will use them. There is an option called Zap uh, Devices as well that can be useful, useful in cases where you have missing labels or or, thing, or existing partitions on your devices, and you want to zap prior to to run the playbook. Uh, this is this is a, this is quite safe to use because um, if we detect that there is a partition called Ceph, we don't we don't run it. So in terms of devices, um, let me uncomment those. I oops, let me see. Yep, um, from SDB to SDF. We support always the auto discovery as well. This is based on the Ansible fact, Ansible devices, where it gathers all all the devices available on the machine. Um, since I have all the disks, I don't want to use this this time. Then we have to choose which scenario we want to use for for that demo. I'm going to be using the journal collocation. So. The journal will be stored on the same device. For for example, if it's on SDB, we will we will end up having two partitions, uh, one called well, one for the journal and the other one for the safe data. And that's it for the configuration of the OSDs. So um, let me quickly show you my my Ansible host file. So as you can see, I have a month section where I have three months from one to th to three and then I have always these from two to five and I have one Rados gateway. We can optionally deploy a REST API if we want and MDS but that won't be possible since Red Hat storage doesn't provide doesn't provide packages for MDS as far as I know. So for now we're gonna stick with what's supported with the Red Hat product. Let's uh, quickly check if uh, I can access all of my machines. Looks like uh, we're good. Um, then we are, I guess we're ready to deploy. Most of the time is spent on adding repos, installing packages, then actually configuring. So I'll be, well, I'll be timing this for you. So you'll see how long it, how long it takes to, to deploy. But I'm going to also post the video and I will resume the video at the end. Um, and yeah, so I'll, I'll see you in a couple of minutes.
So, uh, as you can see, it took um, well six minutes twenty four seconds to to deploy the entire cluster. Um, let's have a look at the state of the cluster now. So, as you can see, I have three monitors, twenty OSDs, uh, I have five OSD servers, uh, no, four OSD servers. Sorry. If you look, if, <coughs> if you look at the, the OSD tree. Uh, I have my four servers and my five disks. Everything is, is doing well. Um, looking at the pools now, uh, we should see various gateway pools. Uh, oopsie. Yep. So, yes, we do. Um, Rados gateway, root controlled, um, and a bunch of other pools from the Rados gateway itself. Um, now we can we can issue a couple of comments. Uh, try to create an image, for example, um, creating full image uh, works. Um, now we can what we can try is to map an image on that on that machine, and I can already tell you that it won't work, and I will explain why, and then I'll be able to show you what we can do with Ansible uh, in terms of replacing. Uh, options configuring options so um, it should be done already by the client but anyway okay rbd map foo yeah this won't work uh, just just because if we look at our zip.conf um, you'll see that uh, we specified suffix require signature let me show you this with them so I can highlight Okay, well, but now you don't see anything. Okay, this is here, SFX require signatures. This, this is currently not supported with the kernel I'm using. Um, I think you at least need 3.9 or, yeah, at least 3.9 to, to have this, but I'm not quite sure. Um, so what we're gonna do now is to disable that feature and then rerun Ansible. So we will be able to map a device. So. Same as last time, go to variables. Let me quickly search for this one. Cfx requires signatures. You also have, so let's put it to false. There is a warning already, but it's just for, a, for the exercise. Now, I'm going to run Ansible again. Uh, we can also time this operation too, just to see how long it takes to apply a new run. So first we we issue the monitor sequence. There are, there are a bunch of uh, of checks. We also apply tunings on the on the system like kernel pin max, uh, file open, uh, max file open, uh, uh, kernel VM pressures and things like this. Then we are about to well we we're currently checking with the if the knowledge is registered, if the repo exists. So of course it does already. It does exist. We install some dependencies like um, like ported uh, HD porn and things like that. So, as you can see, the generate self config configuration file changed uh, on all the nodes. Well, at least on the monitor nodes for now. There is an there is an handler. Uh, where that will restart all the demons so you see we just restarted the months here the monitors because we changed the configuration file and then we are restarting now the safe OSDs it takes a, a little bit more time for the OSDs just because we have more demons so we have five demons for a machine so we try to disable update DB, but it's it's well it doesn't exist. In, in the meantime, uh, what can I tell you? I can tell you that we support Ubuntu 12.04, 14.04, and above. We well of course support CentOS, Rail 7, um, Fedora as well. We can 
We can deploy monitors, OVCs, MDSs, Rados Gateway, and uh, yeah, pretty much everything, REST API. The only thing at the moment that we don't deploy is the Calamari. So now we are on the, on the OSDs. So you see these are the checks that we perform just to make sure that we don't have self-partition. So we don't do anything. So we don't prepare the disks, we don't, we don't format and, and things like that. And we are almost done. Now we're gonna just play that for the monitor, uh, for the Redis gateway again. And, and we should be good. So now we are restarting the OSDs and eventually running the playbook against the Rados Gateway nodes. Once again, checking if the repo is, is enabled. So it probably takes like half the time of the deployment to to rerun the playbook again um, when we when we issue um, a configuration change, I know that we have room for optimization. Uh, for example, uh, in this scenario, we are co-locating monitors and and always these. Um, we have we have several we have several roles um, in Ansible. We have Ceph Common. Ceph, um, Ceph OSD, Ceph monitors, and um, and MDSs as well, and they're all inert from the Ceph common. So if you collocate Ceph monitors and OSDs, which which is what we do now, we 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 play the Ceph common well, twice. So um, yeah, this is this is not really efficient, but it's uh, in the meantime in this. We, we're not supposed to, to do this kind of collocation. So, okay, uh, now we're back uh, again, so we can see the changes, and the, the changes are about restarting demons and changing the configuration file. And it took like yeah, almost four minutes to complete everything. So, checking the state of my cluster, everything's fine again. Uh, I can try to map the device, and now it works. So you can see that the device is mapped. RBDs. And yeah, this is this is a block device. So we can quickly jump into into the Redis Gateway host and we can check that oopsie. That 8080 is listening. It is and well we can can quickly curl and we have a response you see um the get results uh it's the Amazon so well this this says that uh, that everything works and yeah well uh thanks for watching the um, the, um, the the code is available on github and it's at uh, github.com slash Ceph under the Ceph namespace and it's Ceph Ansible. So PR are more than welcome. Tests uh, are encouraged as well. And uh, yeah, this is the end of the second demo of uh, deploying Ceph with Ansible on Bergenau machines. And thanks everyone for watching.